From the new NBC studios in San Francisco, Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time, Harold Terry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, up and down the coast of America, the United States Maritime Commission is launching better than one new Liberty ship a day. Before the end of the year, they'll be turning out three a day. Did you ever wonder how they name all these ships? Well, one of them is about to be called the S.S. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. So let's visit Uncle Mort, Leroy, and Marjorie and see what it's all about. Hi, folks. What's all the excitement? Leroy, we just received a telegram from San Francisco. Yes, they're going to name a new naval vessel, the Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. After you, Unc? Gee, what is it, a tanker or a blimp? Yes. <laughs> It's a liberty ship, my boy, and it's being named in the memory of our ancestor, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve I. Oh, you mean the one who captured the pirates in the War of 1812? Yes, my great-grandfather. I've always been proud of the fact that I'm the son of a son of a son of a sea captain. <laughs> and listen to this, Leroy. Uh? When they lock this ship out near San Francisco, I'm going to be the sponsor. You are? What you going to advertise? If nothing, nothing. <laughs> Marjorie's going to break a bottle of champagne over the bow of the ship. From here? Oh, <laughs> no, silly. We're all going out there. Jeepers, we are. I better start packing. How soon do we leave? Oh, boy, we'll see lots of Indians on the way, won't uh, we? Uh, well, let's get going. Whoa, there. Hold your horses, Buffalo Bill. We don't have to be there till May the 12th, so we'll leave next week. Oh, that means I'll have time to get three or four new outfits. Uh, to launch a ship? Why don't you just wear a bathing suit in case you get splashed? <laughs> now, Leroy, if your sister wore a bathing suit, it would slow down and work on all the other ships. <laughs> oh, <Lord>. yeah. oh. <laughs> oh, Bertie! Someone's at the door. I'll get it just as soon as I can find my cap. A uh, cap? If you mean that silly little dab of white lace you wear on your head, you've got it on. It's over by your left ear there. Oh, my God, so it is. Yeah. I just can't keep it from drifting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save the electricity. Here I come. thrilling news about you going all the way out to California to launch a great big boat. Yeah. And I understand that they're going to name the thing after you, Mr. Gildersleeve, because of what you did in the war of 18 something or other. <laughs> oh, no, no, Dottie. No, not Uncle Mort. It was our great great grandfather, the first Prop Morton P. Gildersleeve. Yes, I'm the fourth and last. Oh, you're the end of the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want all of you to know that I'm just eager to help you get ready or drive you to the station because Mama said we should do everything we can to see that you folks leave town without any trouble. It's good. <laughs> Say, how did you and your mama happen to know all about this? We just got the telegram a few moments ago ourselves. Oh, well, it was simple. They delivered it over to our house first by mistake, and so naturally we opened it by mistake, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so you did, huh? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gilsley, but here's another telegram just come for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, oh, my dear, I wonder who this could be from. From the telegram company. I know that. <laughs> Why, George, it is from the telegram company. What does it say, Uncle Moore? Uh, error in telegram from Richmond Shipbuilding Company. Line reading launching on May 12th should read May 2nd instead. May 2nd? Why, that's next Saturday. And this is Wednesday. We've got to leave here today. Oh, this is going to be one of my bad Wednesdays. <laughs> children. I've got tickets on tonight's train. Let's hurry and pack. Oh, huh? Uncle Mort, how did you ever manage to get reservations so late? Really very simple, my dear. I have a friend who is related by marriage to a cousin of a young lady who went to school with the ticket agent's daughter. Oh, I see. Is that how you got them? No, the two girls aren't speaking to each other. <laughs> so I just stood in line like everybody else and I didn't have a bit of trouble. <laughs> you to come down and see us off, Daddy. Yes, I, I appreciate your driving our car back to the house for us, my dear. Oh, well, I'm only too glad to. All I hope is that I remember which hand is for the brake and which is the clutch. <laughs> oh, but you don't have to worry. I know how to work the gears of my feet all right if I don't have to put it in reverse. If, Dottie, are you sure that you know how to drive a car? Oh, positively. I read all about it in a book. A book? 
So maybe you'd better leave the car here and get someone else to take it home. Oh, now, don't worry. If I get stuck any place like between two streetcars, I'll just call a tow car. Oh, my goodness. Attention, please. West found Limited leaving immediately on this track for San Francisco. All aboard. Oh, good gravy. That's us. That's our train. Goodbye, Dottie. Hey, come on, Marjorie. Uh, uh, Hurry up, Leroy. Oh, excuse me. Wait, wait for me. Is Bertie coming along, too? Bertie, what are you doing down here? You forgot this, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, but, Bertie, I don't need this old vest. Oh, yes, you does. You can't go to the coast without it. Well, why can't I? Because your railroad tickets is in the pocket. What? <laughs> oh. Is that an Indian? Indian? Where, Leroy? Standing in front of that cigar store. Oh, no, my boy. That was just a wooden statue of an Indian. Which Indian, Unc? A chief named Standing Pat. Who was he? Sitting Bull's brother. <laughs> now, stop wiping your feet on that lady's dress and let me work on my speech for the christening. Oh, well, I don't mind him at all in the least. Such a sweet child. What's your name, mannequin? Leroy. Oh, Leroy. And do they ever call you Font Leroy? Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> I think I'll go out on the observatory platform, Uncle. Is yes, where? Oh, yes, the observatory platform. And hey, be careful and don't lean too far over. That's how we lost Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, what a dear boy. Yours? Uh, nephew. And as I look out over this vast sea of faces gathered around her... Uh, pardon me? Oh, excuse me, please. I'm working on my speech. Oh, well, excuse me, uh, Senator. If I don't happen to be a senator, madam, I'm just putting together a little talk for a ceremony that's going to take place on the West Coast. Oh, a wedding. Uh, well, no, but if you must know, it's a christening. You've probably read about it in the newspapers. Uh, the naming of the new Gildersleeve. Oh, the new Gildersleeve. Is it a he or a she? It's a her. Oh, well, tell me all about it. Well, uh, we're representing the family, you see. They're going to give her the same name as I have, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Uh, they're going to call her uh, Throckmorton? Oh, yes, yes. It's an old family name. They're going to paint it right on her stern. <laughs> Uh, they are. Oh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to the ceremony very eagerly. It's quite colorful. With the bands playing and the whistles blowing and the champagne flowing. Uh, well, now, I, I can't say that I approve of drinking champagne at a serious moment like that. Oh, uh, we wouldn't think of drinking it. We'd just smash the bottle across her nose. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I hope you're joking. It's joking. That's the procedure, madam. Sock her with a quart and push her into the bay. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, won't she drown? It, oh, of course not. She floats. <laughs> but uh, the little thing is helpless. Uh, helpless. Not that baby. Did you ever see the engines on a Liberty ship? Uh, no. What's that got to do with a tiny infant? I don't know. Who's talking about infants? Why, you were. You were hitting little girls with champagne bottles and then drowning them and calling them throttled. Morton, Madam, I think your brains are playing hooky. Good day. <laughs> What's the matter with that woman? Sad case. Uh, oh, conductor. Yes, sir. I'm still trying to find an empty berth for your nephew and you. See, I see on my list there's a Lieutenant Copeland who's occupying a drawing room all by himself. Oh. He's right up ahead in this car. Really? Uh, which room is he in? Drawing room D. Oh, that's fine. I'll ask him if we can move in. Uh, G... F E uh here we are D Maybe he isn't home. I better try the door to make sure. Ah! Oh, excuse me. Of all the stupid train officials I ever ran into, this fella. <laughs> no, see here, conductor. Yeah? Why didn't you tell me that Lieutenant Copeland is a nurse in the medical corps? <laughs> Suffering swordfish. Eight o'clock in the morning, and I haven't had a wink of sleep all night. Come on, Leroy, wake up. Mm-hmm. Uh, wake up, Leroy. Mm-hmm. Oh, good morning, Uncle Mort. Uh? Did you have a nice rest? Young man, how could I rest squeezing an upper berth with you? Oh, gee, why not? Because you play baseball all night. <laughs> baseball? Yeah, all you do is pitch and toss and knock the covers off. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mean to, Uncle. Yeah, all right, my boy. I know you didn't mean to. Now, let's get dressed, huh? 
Oh, great jumping jeeps. What's wrong? Look, our clothes fell out of the little green hammock. Yeah. They're spread all over the place. Oh, lift, uh, lift up your foot, Unc. Uh, my foot? All yeah. right, why? You were wearing your hat as a slipper. <laughs> Where'll I put it? Uh, let me see. I don't see any place to hang it. Uh, better hang it on my head. You see my shoes any place, my boy? No. Have you looked under your pillow? <laughs> Why, George, that's where they were. And I thought the mattress was lumpy. <laughs> I better put my trousers on first, huh? What's the trouble? The legs in these pants seem to have shrunk overnight. Oh, that's your coat. Well, what? <laughs> By Jupiter, the next time you and I sleep together in an upper berth, Leroy, we're going to do it in relays. Come on, we can finish dressing in the washroom. I'll get down first, and then you... Oh! <laughs> Did you accidentally bump your head, Unc? Oh, no, Leroy. I deliberately tried to push it through the roof so I could get a breath of fresh air. <laughs> uh, Porter? Yes, sir? Uh, will you bring your stepladder and put it here? It's right here, boss. Oh, uh, that's fine. Well, here I come. <laughs> uh, Leroy? Yes, Unc? You better jump. <laughs> I'll be down in a minute, Unc. All right, bring the toothbrushes. Uh, well, Porter, where am I? Well, you're just out of Clinton, Iowa, and I'm just out of ladder. <laughs> Clinton, Iowa, yes. Are you sure? Yes, sir. We're just crossing the Mississippi River. And uh, now about that ladder. Oh, Leroy, look, there's the Mississippi. Jeepers, what a mess of water. Yeah. Say, from now on, we ought to see a load of Indians, huh? Yeah, possibly, my boy, possibly. Now, come on, let's get washed up. Yeah, my ladder's washed up, Sean. Sure <laughs> What's he mumbling about? As soon as we pull into Clinton, we'll get Marjorie and take a nice brisk walk on the platform so we'll have an appetite for breakfast. I've got a swell appetite already. Yes. Not so much noise, young man. What did you say, Unc? I said not so much noise. Okay. Yes. Mustn't make uncouth noise. No, 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 sir. Yes. Yes. Come on, Leroy. I'll shave later. Oh, look, there's Marjorie. Marjorie! Oh, good morning, Uncle Mort. Oh, Leroy. Have a good night's rest? Leroy did. He slept like a log and rolled like one, too. <laughs> Come on, family. Let's stretch our legs, huh? Okay. Ah, uh, Clinton, Iowa. <coughs> oh, well, just two more days and we'll be in sunny California. Gee, Uncle, here's another train. That's the eastbound limited, my boy. Same as the one we we're on, only going the other way. We'll ride on that on the way back. Yeah, I wonder if I have time to get some postage stamps. I think so, if we hurry. Oh, uh, Lord. Oh, I was wrong. Come on, children. Hop on quick. Here. I can't understand this. We were supposed to stop here ten minutes. But, oh, well, the engineer's probably in a hurry to get home. Let's go into the diner. I'm awfully hungry. Yeah, yeah me too. That's an idea. Ah, good morning. Table for three? Right this way, please. Say, Uncle Mort, do you mind if I ask you a silly question? You better wait till I've had my breakfast. What is it? Does the Mississippi River run on both sides of Clinton, Iowa? Uh, why, of course not, my boy. What makes you think so? Oh, just look out that window. There's Old Man River again. Yeah, but that's impossible. But it's there, just the same. Well, I see it. But still, it can't be unless... Oh, Stuart! Uh, yes, sir? What train is this? The East Unlimited. Oh, my goodness, we're headed right back home again. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. But first, the good word for all you thrifty women who are looking for a really economical main dish. The product called Kraft Dinner is just what you're searching for. At a very low price, it gives you delicious macaroni and cheese, enough for four. And with Kraft Dinner, you cook that macaroni and cheese in just seven minutes. You see, in every package of thrifty Kraft Dinner, there's a quick cooking macaroni and some Kraft grated that lets you add the cheese goodness with no extra work at all. Doesn't that give you a bright idea for luncheon on busy days and for dinners when you've shopped later, been detained by your own special wartime job? Now, the nice part of it is the whole family will love macaroni and cheese made the seven-minute Kraft Dinner way. So get some Kraft Dinner packages at your food dealers tomorrow. You'll be surprised to find how economical it is. And you'll be smart to stock the pantry shelf with plenty of Kraft Dinner. <laughs> Now let's return to our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who's making a long-distance telephone call to Summerfield from an airport somewhere in Illinois. If, if, hello, hello, uh, Bertie, are you there? No, sir, I'm here. Where are you, Miss Gildersleeve? I'm in Illinois, Bertie. We're flying to the coast. Flying and talking in the telephone at the same time? Mm-hmm. Well, they think I'm next. 
No, Bertie, we're not flying now. We're about to take off. Take off what? It... <laughs> Never mind what. We've lost our baggage and we need some new clothes. Well, why did you take off the others? Uh, we didn't. We got off the train, but we forgot to take off our clothes. I was just... Yes. And now we're ready to take off in an airplane, and oh, good grief, Bertie, it's too complicated to explain at $3 a minute. Is everything all right at home? Oh, yes, it's just fine, except for your car. It, don't tell me Dottie's wrecked it. Oh, no, she didn't even move it. Oh, uh, then it's still at the station? Yes, but not at the railroad station, it's at the police station. <laughs> but why? The police don't think it's safe to drive. Why not? Well, how do you go and drive a car with the windshield all covered with stickers? It, my windshield was not covered with stickers. Now, traffic summonses. There's no parking garage. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are the police angry? Oh, no. It's the fire department that's perturbed. Well, why are they mad? Because they couldn't find the fire plug until after the fire engine burned down. Oh, what's that got to do with my automobile? Oh, your car was hiding the plug. Oh, then why didn't Dottie drive it away in the first place? She just couldn't get it started. Why not? Because you took the keys along with you. Oh, now I see it all. Hurry up, Uncle Moore. All right. Hey, goodbye, Bertie. Goodbye. Just keep on having a nice time. Yeah. Gee, Uncle, this plane ride is super. Where are we now? I'm not sure, Leroy. We're either in South Dakota or else Colorado, or perhaps we're deep over the heart of Texas. Uh-oh, we're going to sit down. Leroy, we're already sitting down. No, that's an aeronautical expression, Uncle Mort, uh? meaning the plane is going to make a landing. Oh, it is? Well, I must remember that. Oh, uh, Stewart is. Yes, Mr. Gildas? I see that the plane is getting ready to take a seat. No, no, I'm sitting down. Oh, yeah, that's it. I got my aeronautical terms twisted. <laughs> when are we going to be seated, Stewardess? We're making a landing near Blackfoot, Wyoming. Oh. Oh, incidentally, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're going to be all right now, so you can let go of my hand. Why? What? Oh. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Unfasten your safety belt. Uh, unfasten your safety uh, I hope we aren't stranded again. If we don't get to San Francisco by tomorrow morning, that ship's name won't be Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, and neither will mine. Come on, Uncle. We've landed. Let's get oh. out. Yeah, all right. I'm coming. Be careful. Now. Don't step on that plane there. Uh, Marjorie, do you know why the plane had to squat down? Squat down? Uh, sure. That's an aeronautical term. Well, I understand that the group of flyers from the ferry command who have to travel in a hurry. Oh. So we're giving up our seats to them. Oh, well, I don't mind doing that, but when do we get another plane? Tomorrow morning. It, but we've got to be in California tomorrow morning. But how can we get there? Well, maybe if we could... If Leroy, what's wrong with you, my boy? Gee, I haven't seen a single Indian. I don't want Indians. <laughs> I'm looking for some fast transportation. Say, there's a young fellow with an old cut-down jalopy. Where? Oh, yes. Come on quickly before any of the other passengers see him. Boy, look at that boat. Huh? Oh, say, mister. Hi, good looking. What's cooking? It... <laughs> Young man, how would you like to earn some money? Oh, you're rolling them down my alley. Just put me hep, cat. It... <laughs> Are those aeronautical terms, too, Leroy? No, Unc, that's jive. He it... means that he's interested. Oh, good. Well, I'll have to go back to school again, I guess. <laughs> Young man, it, it, we want to get to the nearest city in the worst way. Which probably means traveling in that Blitzkrieg buggy of yours. Okay, Fatso, just whistle your proposition. <laughs> whistle my what? Oh, dish out the deal, Uncle Dudley. Make him an offer, Uncle. Oh, make him an offer, yes. Uh, I'll give you $15 if you'll take us as far as Cheyenne. We should be able to get a train from there. Okay, Pappy. Climb in and I'll make with a motor. Uh, um... We can. <laughs> oh, yeah, careful. Careful. Uh, uh, you comfortable, Marjorie? Hmm. How about you, Leroy? Local, local, Unc. Huh? Oh, well, go go local, then. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go, Mr. Um... Uh, my folks named me Chief Rain in the Face, but that's too corny. Just call me Drizzlepuss. <laughs> Gee, Unc, at last, I've met an Indian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, my goodness, now I know how a malted milk feels. Gosh, kids, I'm sorry my Jeep won't jive no more. It, what's the trouble, Driz? It can't this motorized churn take it? It just can't take you, puffy pants. <laughs> now, you've dragged the back seat so low it needs a wheel in the middle. Oh. Well, I'll cheer up, Uncle Mort. At least he's delivered us near a railroad station. Yeah. Station? Why, well, that's just a water tank, Marge. Uh, yeah, and there's a westbound train watering up. Oh, what are we waiting for? Let's get out of this galvanized gaboon. 
Hey, uh, Jelly Pot, what about the old days? Uh, is he, uh, oh, I almost forgot. Well, here you are, Driz Puss. Uh, uh, five, ten, uh, fifteen uh, simoleons. Hey, wait for us. Uh, goodbye, Drip Pan. Uh, give us a rumble any time you make Summerfield. Hurry, Uncle. Yeah, I'm coming, my dear. Uh, thank goodness I made it. Are you two all right? Yeah. Let's get inside and find the conductor. I hope I have enough money to pay for our tickets. Oh, here he comes right now. Well, hello there, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, kids. Huh? Where have you fell folks been keeping yourself since Clinton, Iowa? Well, what do you know? We're back on the same old train. <laughs> building? I don't know, Leroy. Now, please don't ask me any more questions. I'm rehearsing my speech for the launching today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I gaze out over this vast sea of faces... Gee, look, is that the ocean, Uncle? Uh, no, San Francisco Bay. As I look out over the vast sea of San Francisco Bay, uh, I recall the thrilling words of Captain Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, the first, when he said... Oh, boy, is that an orange tree? When he said, oh, boy, is that an orange tree? <laughs> no. But when he said, uh, millions for defense, but not one cent for tribute. And so I say to you... When do we get into Oakland? Yeah, when do we get into... Uh... <laughs> Leroy, I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, here's your sister. She can answer your questions. Hello, Uncle Mort. When do we get into Oakland? Yeah, uh, what's the use? You better ask the porter, Marjorie. Oh, all right. Oh, George! Uh, Marjorie, never call a porter George. That's the sign of an inexperienced traveler. Watch me. Uh, Porter? Yes, sir. Uh, what's your name, Porter? It's George, sir. It is George. <laughs> uh, George, how soon do we arrive in Oakland? Oh, we'll be at the 16th Street Station in 15 minutes, sir. Oh, what time is it now? It's uh, 10 after 10. Oh, jumping jelly beans. We arrive at 1025. The launching takes place at 1045. That only gives us 20 minutes to get over from Oakland over to the Richmond shipyards, uh, wherever they are. Do you think we can make it, Porter? You mean to the Richmond shipyards in Richmond? Yes, of course. Well, maybe, but it's an awfully funny thing. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, what's so funny? You remember that last station we just stopped at? Why, of course. Man, that was Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Uncle Mort, can't the driver go any faster? He probably could, my dear, but there's a company rule that he's got to stay with his taxi cab. <laughs> uh, how much farther, cabby? Just a matter of minutes, folks. Take it easy. Why don't you turn on the radio? If... Uh, because there isn't enough room in here to dance. <laughs> Turn on the radio, indeed. Gee, I'm hungry, Unc. What are we going to eat? Right after the ceremony, my boy. They always have a beautiful big luncheon party for the launching party. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm so nervous. I hope I don't miss the bottle with the boat. Huh? I mean, the bottle with the bottle. Well, I mean... Oh, now, now, relax, Marjorie. Look at me. I'm going to deliver a 20-minute oration. And I'm just as clam as a calm. <laughs> uh, just remember the motto of the Gildersleeves, my dear. Uh, uh, what is it, Uncle Mort? In the excitement, I guess I've forgotten the motto. Here, here, here. What's the idea of stopping, driver? To get going, we haven't got any time to lose here. But, mister, we're at the gate of the Richmond shipyard. Oh, oh, splendid. Uh, children, we made it with 17 seconds to spare. Jeepers, look at the size of the place. Yeah. Leroy, this is one of the fastest shipbuilding plants in the world. Uh, well, uh, go ahead, driver. What's stopping you? That big gate. Oh, the big gate. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I forgot. Uh, Mr. Guard, it's all right. We're the Gildersleeve party for the launching, you know. Can I see your invitation, please? Oh, of course, invitation. Uh, where did I leave it? Uh, let me see. Oh, Uncle Moore, don't tell me we have to go clear back to Summerfield for that invitation. <laughs> Take it easy, my dear. I've got it here someplace. Uh, it, uh, can't get in without an invitation. Huh? No, sir. Yeah, I see. Think, Throckmorton, think. Oh, I know. It's in the suitcase. Yes. Yeah, it's a nervous I can't seem to. Uh, oh, there we are. It's open. Uh, Leroy, help me dump out these shirts and stuff. Huh? Okay, Unc. Yes. Uh, Timetables, magazines, stationery, bedroom slippers, nightshirt. Have you looked in the drawers, Unc? There aren't any drawers in there. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Yeah, well, here it is, right here. Uh, uh, here you are, sir. Okay. Drive right through, then straight down. Oh, guard, uh, have you seen anything of some people named Gildersleeve? Yes, Mr. Foley. Here they are. Oh, hello there. I'm Tom Foley, the superintendent. Well... Let's hurry. We're late. I'll just stand here on the running board. 
Straight ahead, driver. Thank you very much. My goodness, what happened to your baggage? Have you been in an accident? Uh, no, Brother Foley. We've been in trains, planes, cabs, cars, and wash tubs. But so far, no accidents. <laughs> oh, all right, driver. Go right into that parking place. Uh. Come on, Miss Forrester. We haven't a moment to lose. Up this stairway, you follow us, Mr. Gildersleeve. All right. Gee, I'll take a squat at all the ships. Yes, later, my boy, later. Uh, as I look at this vast sea of faces, I remember the words of the first Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, who said, uh, oh, what did he say? Uh, here are your flowers, Miss Forrester. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, my goodness, I've forgotten something. I'll have to go back to town. What is it, Mr. Gildersleeve? I didn't get a bottle of champagne. Come back here. It's all set. Oh, that's what I... Now, let us through, please. Uh? Thank you. Uh-oh. Come on, right here now. Uh, stand aside. Give me the bottle of champagne, Lloyd. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> here you are, Miss Forrester. Uh-oh. Now, you know what to say, don't you? Yes. All right, just make it snappy. Now, quiet, please. Be quiet. I christen thee Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I guess it's my turn now. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, as I look out on this vast sea of faces, I see this. this hey, Bud, what? get down off that platform. We gotta move it. Move it, but my speech. We ain't got time for speeches. We gotta lay the keel for the next Liberty ship. Hurry, pal, there's a war going on. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. Meanwhile, I want to tell you how to cook one of America's favorite main dishes in seven minutes flat. Yes, you can make fluffy light macaroni with cheese goodness through and through that fast. Get a package of the product called Kraft Dinner. Take the special Kraft Dinner macaroni out of the package and cook it in boiling water not more than seven minutes by the clock. No need to bake or blanch this macaroni. Just drain it and lightly mix in a little butter and milk. Then with the Kraft grated that comes in every Kraft dinner package, you sprinkle in the cheese flavor. Pop that macaroni and cheese into a casserole, onto the table, your main dish is ready. And with Kraft dinner, your delicious macaroni and cheese is one of the most economical main dishes you can find. Doesn't Kraft dinner sound like what you've been looking for? For days when you're rushed to get luncheon or dinner, and to help out the budget, too. Well, get some tomorrow. Every Kraft Dinner package contains the makings for four servings of delicious macaroni and cheese. Better get several packages so that the pantry shelf will be all set for hurry-up meals. Remember the name, Kraft Dinner. Mr. Foley says they're building these Liberty ships here in any days. Yes, Leroy. You can't beat American production methods. Why, these new boats are almost assembly jobs. What do you mean? Well, a ship is made up of thousands of items. They come from almost every city and state in our union. Engines from Denver, lifeboats from Kokomo, Indiana, wheels from Seattle, pine from Georgia, switchboards from Connecticut, uh, the manifolds from West Virginia, uh, patch covers from Maine. Every part of our nation is represented here. They're real liberty ships, my boy, built by liberty-loving men, so that liberty shall not perish from this earth. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randall. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This week's program was broadcast from the new NBC studios in San Francisco. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>